Welcome to God Awful Movies, live from Detroit, Michigan. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out to my hometown. This is the podcast, of course, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, even when that means watching a Scientology movie directed by a dude named Christian. <laughs> Found a connection. I'm your host, No Illusions, and joining me, of course, from stage right, please welcome my good friend, Heath Enright. <laughs> oh my goodness, is that a little, a little sparkle donkey? That is Sparkle Donkey. The tequila for fucking your dad. Yes. They actually they want us to toy with that, I think, over the course yeah, yeah, of the no, show. They, they like We're going to get some better slogans. Yeah. We'll, we'll the figure. tequila for fucking your stepdad, maybe? Oh, there you is go. That better? To no, be that's improving? topical. Yeah, I think that's like that in better. these days. And okay. of course, also joining us tonight, please put your hands together for my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. <laughs> I'm not even looking. It's a car. Cause Detroit. And who's who's driving the car? Yeah, it's Carl. Carl the pug peg car. Can I pull back the curtain for y'all slightly? So this place... <laughs> no, no, that's not what he means. Not, uh, uh, here's why I can't pull the curtain back slightly. So this place serves liquor, and if you don't think there was a Donner Party-esque drawing of straws to be the member of staff who had to come up and be like, hey, man, you have to wear underwear <laughs> under your... Because I was not wearing underwear. <laughs> And that poor man had to be like, so I went to theater school and got a degree in technical theater. And now I'm telling the fat rabbi to hide his penis. <laughs> so if you see someone just come over the railing suspended by a rope. Okay. <laughs> Sparkle Donkey Tequila. <laughs> Suicide is painless. <laughs> Oh, I think he's, uh, yeah, yeah, he's got clothes back there somewhere. <laughs> hey, while we're waiting for, for Eli to get dressed, I have a Detroit fun fact for Ooh, you. Oh, you have fun facts about Detroit? I have, I have a fun fact. Did you know that Detroit has the highest average household income of any city in the United States of America? Is that true? In 1949. Okay. <laughs> okay. Back when 33% of private sector employees were unionized? Ah, oh. remember unions? Yeah. <laughs> Man. Remember living wages? I don't, I don't. Nope, I... nope. You're too young for that. Born during Reagan. There he is. <laughs> oh, in my scathing atheist t-shirt. It's tri-blend. Tri-blend, so soft. A blend so smooth he will forget five boxes of them at his house in Ann Arbor. <laughs> I don't think that's what happened. Hope it's you guys clear. like extra large. I just, I just think that the fact that the ones that you forgot were all your size tells us something. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> this is why we can't see his apartment. All the furniture is made out of tri-blend <laughs> t-shirts. He's banded together. So, I like the feel on my face. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. So, I guess we should start the actual show proper. Mm -hmm. And we should start that by, with me asking you, Heath, to tell us. What will we be breaking down today? We watched Battlefield Earth. Yeah. Finally. Okay. Hands up. Who's seen this? Oh, shit. Love this. Oh, okay. nice. Nice. Uh, listeners at home, I should point out that all but seven people just raised yeah. their hands. I should also point out that I think the manager of the theater walked down earlier and was like, I love this movie. I hope you aren't <laughs> going to make fun of it. And we were like, cool. If no the lights problem. should suddenly go out and we're just <laughs> shouting into the void, you know why. Okay, well, it's, it's the story mm -hmm. that star John Travolta proudly called the Schindler's List of sci-fi. That's real! Real quote. 
What does that even mean? What did he <laughs> think he meant when he said that? I think when we think of terrible things that have happened throughout history, <laughs> we think of Schindler's List. First. The Holocaust, right? Well, let's then, make the Holocaust higher. The, no, the Holocaust is here. Mm -hmm. And then Schindler's List was here, though. Battlefield yeah. Earth is here. here. Yes, oh, I see what you're doing. That's okay. where I am. Fair. Well, so you're getting ahead of us a bit, Eli. So tell us officially then. How bad was this movie? And, and keep in mind that the listeners at home can't see where your hand is, so you That's can't fair, use the yeah. Holocaust scale again. <laughs> Spin the wheel of Holocaust. Guess what I'm doing with my hands, listeners at home? <laughs> Should have come to the live show. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, if you love the crazy of Scientology, but the subtlety of alien volcanoes and bad emotion alien ghosts is too much work for you. Uh -huh. You will love this movie. And I do. Yeah, now I'm sure most of you know what we should say up front, that this was a passion project for John Travolta. He really wanted this to get made. This was, of all L. Ron Hubbard's books, this is the one he most wanted to see made into a movie. <laughs> yeah, right. Everything else was even worse than this. This one had the most pictures. Yeah. <laughs> so... This movie got kicked by two different studios. It was eventually picked up by an investment firm that then tricked a European distribution company into actually paying for, the f for funding the movie. They got sued over that and, got, and went out of fucking business. It's like the history of Tesla. Yes. Like, <laughs> what? So weird. Yeah, epic level disaster here. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I'm going to go with best worst source material. We already started talking about it. It's yeah. based on the book by L. Ron Hubbard. To get that book onto the New York Times bestseller list, that whole cult of Scientology would go around buying up all the books, and the church would collect them back, mm -hmm. and then <laughs> send those already purchased copies back to retail stores again in a recycling scam. We know this, yeah, we know this because they're fucking idiots, and... <laughs> People at Barnes and Noble were like, "How come the books already have our price tag yes, on them?" Yes. <laughs> when they How come, you... when they come in the mail from the Scientology people, <laughs> so... horrible. And I hear the book is way better than the movie. So, oh well, there you go. There's that. Oh. So I was gonna go with, and this is the the most common criticism I think that you hear about this, other than the Scientology angle. I was gonna go with best worst relative viewing angle. <laughs> Yeah, right, the whole fucking movie. <laughs> Just like that. Just have to wa you have to, I, I watched it on my computer, I'm doing this. <laughs> Stupid fucking movie. And for those who haven't seen it, I should say that, that this movie used what's called a Dutch angle, which is like a 30 degree angle. It's, it's meant as this really nauseous angle. So it's like the last fucking thing you'd want to spend an entire movie looking at, but. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Pennsylvania Dutch angle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Dutch angle, like the Marsh rule, if you say Dutch anything, it sounds like a sex thing, right? Dutch angle. It if does. I offered you a Dutch angle, you'd be like, fuck yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> sounds like I can't afford it, but I want it. <laughs> In Detroit, you can afford it. <laughs> Poverty, am I right? You should leave. Here. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> from this place. <laughs> Eli? We'll take you. You can go with us. <laughs> yeah, this is a legit refugee situation. <laughs> no. Everybody's you? blinking at us. Like, yeah. please <laughs> do the thing you're talking about. We are refugees. <laughs> <laughs> you know that thing, like, bad people do where they'll be like, we need to help America rather than... Blah, blah, blah. I never believed in that until I came to Detroit, and now I'm like, no, those, those guys make some solid points. <laughs> Did you have a best worst by any chance? Best worst city. So here's the thing about okay, your no, fucking... All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with best worst not. <laughs> so here's the thing. This movie is based on L. Ron Hubbard's writing, and L. Ron Hubbard writes like that cousin who just quoted Borat from age 13 to 34. So all he has his villains do throughout the entire film is be like, I have not done an evil thing. But yes, I have! Yes. It's the whole film. Over and over again. All right, well, I'll tell you what. We've been waiting the better part of a decade to do this one, so we're going to keep the break brief. When we come back, we'll dive into all the underwritten overacting that is Battlefield Earth. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, everyone, thanks for coming to this, the third iteration of Battlefield Earth's screenwriting team. Hey! As you know, our first two screenwriters refused to respect L. Ron Hubbard's vision, then the third requested his name to be taken off the project, but he couldn't because he got paid too much, so here we are. Ready to pitch our movie, which will eventually be rejected by seven studios in a row, and then illegally represented to a venture capital firm. Any questions? Um, is it too late to quit? Sure is. Hey! Right? <laughs> this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hi, podcast listener. I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Heath Enright. You know, we spent quite a bit of time talking about the positive elements of this week's sponsor, BetterHelp. Like how it's entirely online, how you can use their messaging interface to speak with your therapist even when you don't have an appointment, and you can switch therapists on BetterHelp at any time for free. No awkward therapist breakups. No awkward therapist breakups indeed. But this week, we'd like to remind you that the alternative to therapy is this movie. That's right. Famed anti-psychiatry loon L. Ron Hubbard didn't want you to try better help because he wanted you to join him on this journey of space bureaucracy, thousand-year-old jet fuel, and leverage. So, maybe note the company you're keeping by not doing better help. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. And we're back! And we're, we're going to open up with the words on the screen. It comes up and it says, man is an endangered species. And I'm like, all right, calm down, Tucker. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, I wish, am I right, ladies? Yeah, right. <laughs> Nature's healing. It's good. It's good. <laughs> it's good that we're, <laughs> we're getting rid of the white men with dreadlocks. Yeah, right. Speaking of which. Which are most of this movie. Yeah, we, we start off with our hero coming down from the mountains on horseback. They're like, he's like, I've got the medicine. And they're like, your dad passed away in the night. It's too late. And he's like, is this ever going to come up in any fucking way again in the movie? And they're like, nope, never, never again. How else would we introduce my character except <laughs> by his tardiness? <laughs> I wanted that to be a theme for the rest of the film. Like he just shows up and he's like, oh, motherfuck. <laughs> just, just missed it. So yeah, but we learn here that the humans are now like refugees that are either enslaved by the aliens that have taken over the Earth, or they're living out in the scrublands and they're barely able to survive, although they look particularly well-fed. Yeah, there right? will never be an apocalypse so bad in any Hollywood movie that all the women aren't shaved bare. Yeah, right. right. Whatever. <laughs> when the nukes go off, apparently you're all just going to grab the razors and head for the mountains. <laughs> well... So, and we need to point this out early and often. This movie is supposed to take place a thousand years hence. All right? So, it's supposed to take place a thousand years from now. Just keep that in mind as we go. And we say, I wonder where all of those safety razors are coming from, right? So, we get a scene where all of the, the refugee barbarian humans that have fallen back into the primitive state. Don't worry, I'm allowed to say that they're white. <laughs> Everybody and they are, this movie, they so are. It's, yeah, White and Forrest Whitaker, yeah. Um, and he's so mad. He's so mad <laughs> that he got tricked into this movie because he's fucking okay. friends with Travolta or something. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Did he lose an escape room and that's why he's in so, this? No, so he was, a, he was a Scientologist at the time. He, he, after, the, after this movie, he's like, nah, fuck that, obviously. <laughs> obviously they're lying or that movie would have been better, <laughs> so... Well, we see the old guy, all the barbarian humans, they're in their cave, and Johnny, our main character... Sorry. <laughs> yes, please, please. Sorry. The full name. Yeah, yes, Johnny, but Johnny Good Boy Tyler. Johnny Good Boy is the title of the character... Wow. You can smell the moment John Travolta said that out loud. <laughs> like he was making up an excuse to the cops while covered in blood. Yeah. Was, okay, Johnny, what do you want to call the character? Johnny. Oh, you. Your you, name? Same. <laughs> Good boy. So, was, uh, are you looking at your Don't dog? Don't say Vinny Barbarino. Tyler Barbarino. Okay. <laughs> so, hey. Well, and that'll, honestly, the, the, one of the main themes of this movie is being way too in love with L. Ron Hubbard's stupid fucking writing. I'm just going to power through, see, because the, because the audience at home, they don't know you're doing shenanigans. If I just keep talking, they're just going to assume everybody's laughing at, the, at my delivery. 
So, but the key here is... <laughs> but the key here... Morgan, all of this, all of this. The key here, though, is that Johnny believes it's time for them to go to the better hunting grounds, even if that means upsetting the demon aliens that, they're, that everybody's hiding from. That is our inciting incident. He, he sets off, the love interest tries to stop him, and he says, no, this is act one. You are not part of the movie yet. Yeah. You are. She gives him a necklace from the Jimmy Buffett Margaritaville <laughs> gift shop. Yes. So, but he leaves. He leaves her behind. She's Chrissy. We'll see her again later when we need someone to be in distress. I'm impressed she got a name already. Yeah, which right? Is good. Right? It's good. Yeah. That's about all she's going to get in the movie. <laughs> Well, she'll be under stress. <laughs> so, so anyway, so he gets on his horse. He's heading through, and there's suddenly there's a sky explosion. He gets freaked out. And there's this moment where, like, he sees a dragon, and he jumps off of his, his horse. But then it turns out it's just like a ceramic dinosaur from a mini golf course. <laughs> a thousand years hence. <laughs> fucking mini golf stegosauruses in the Parthenon, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Just... Mm -hmm. Equally well constructed. Twinkies, also Twinkies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why would those survive a nuclear? It's fine. Yep. Nope. Nope. But a couple of guys get the drop on him here while he's looking at the Stegosaurus, and and we can tell that these guys have been, you know, like reverted to their barbarian primitive ways because they're making fucking monkey noises. Yep. Yep. I was excited to see that the Jersey accent will survive the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. For a thousand years. <laughs> right, but they're like, uh, they're going to attack him and take all of his stuff, but then they get into an argument about whether there's a god. <laughs> <laughs> like they're auditioning for this fucking show. <laughs> like spears at the same time as one guy being like, hold on, but epistemologically speaking. <laughs> yes, right, The right. Kalam cosmological argument doesn't... No, god is an object outside of category. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> bullshit, man. <laughs> Listen to yourself, Craig. <laughs> Sorry. You sound like an idiot. Sorry. <laughs> now spear no, that guy right. through I, the eye. I'll, I'll murder him. Yeah. But ultimately, Stupid. this this robbery goes so wrong. This is just this is like every interaction I ever have online, right? It starts off as a robbery, but it ends up like, I'll give you some food if you can prove to me that God exists, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... <laughs> So he follows, and they're like, no, we'll show you a god. There's one over just over here. So we follow him into this, like, it's supposed to be this ruined city. And back when they thought they were going to have a $100 million budget, I'm sure it was going to be. Instead, it's a painting, right? <laughs> so he follows him to this fucking painting. The fucking super friends are like, enough with the fucking wipe fades, yeah, dude. What the hell real. with these transitions? Meanwhile, in a slightly <laughs> better budgeted movie... <laughs> But apparently the, the guys that just jumped in, they think that all the mannequins and statues from in this ruined city used to be people that angered the gods and were turned into mannequins, right? Yeah, and I want to say it's silly that people would think mannequins were people punished by gods, but religion is so much dumber than yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. Mannequins are real, for instance. Yeah. <laughs> you can right, touch them. Right. So... <laughs> you guys filled in, you can fuck a mannequin. That I felt you all collectively be like, and you can fuck them. You okay, Detroit? <laughs> and they're not no. just okay; they're they're a mannequin fucking yeah. okay, yeah. Oh yeah, Sparkle Donkey. Yes, <laughs> the tequila for fucking your mannequin. <laughs> I think that's better. We're getting yeah. better. We're getting yeah, better. No, no, Dadakin? Exactly. Dadakin? Dadak step Dadakin. A mannequin of your dad. <laughs> So, so they test the waters. No, it makes sense. So, so they camp out at a mall at a Dutch angle. Nice. They eat some chicken at a Dutch angle. So he walked around with a bag of raw chicken, to be clear. Yes, right, yes. He must have had raw chicken on him then. Okay. Or they hunted a chicken at that moment. I don't know. It's one or the other. So, and then, so we have Johnny, and we have the two guys that have, he's joined up with. One of them is named Carlo. The other one is overweight and will therefore die in just a moment, right? I get it. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So they're arguing about, like, he's, he's like, this is where Carlo gives him the God stone, as though there's a like, minimum number of times they had to say the word God to be on our podcast. Right? He's like, here's a God stone. He's like, is it super sharp? He's like, yeah. He's like, well, nobody ever think to take it from me, no matter how goddamn imprisoned I get. He's like, yeah, surprisingly enough. Does this count yet for God awful movies? Yes, yes, yes it, does. it does. We're, okay. we're already there. So, but just then, an alien comes through and starts shooting at him with a laser that has an enormous amount of kinetic force for a laser. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Photons. Yes. Side tackle a person. Light yeah. pressure. Photons do that. Yeah. One of my favorite things about this movie is that they were like, well, they're alien guns, so they can't be gun shaped. Yeah. And the prop master was like, okay, but you know guns are shaped like that because they fire things, and that's sort of the natural shape. And John Travolta was like, stop talking. <laughs> I want it to look like the Wu-Tang symbol. <laughs> and it fires from underneath your hand yes. where you can't see it. Right, obviously. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. I wrote my notes, I'm like, oh shit, dreadlocks, it must be the bad guy in any movie before 2010. So yeah, but, but they shoot Carlo, Johnny and the big guy run at various Dutch angles. I'm not gonna call them out every time, like 80% of the movie is at a Dutch angle. I just, I have to emphasize it at some point. I like the point. idea that they ran at a Dutch angle though, right? That the... <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so Johnny calls his horse. The horse gets shot with a laser. Don't worry, he'll be fine. He's fine. He's fine. We'll find out later. I was worried too. Okay. Um, so now, they uh, like horses and they fuck mannequins. Yes. I'm just, I'm trying to catch the vibe from oh, you yeah, as yeah, an yeah. audience. No, exactly. Got to, got to read the room. So, but Johnny he outruns the lasers for a while, which is tough, but he manages it, but not for long. Eventually, he does get shot by a laser. It is set to stun. Which means he's been captured. Now, I didn't know that you could be imprisoned silly. <laughs> but the, scre the shot of him screaming as they're pulling him away, he's in the cage and he's grabbing under the cage and he's screaming, is about the silliest fucking thing I've ever seen outside of a Donald James Parker <laughs> show. Everyone in the cage was like doing the improv exercise, like, I'm a squirrel. So they're doing like, <laughs> yeah. they're eating nuts <laughs> off the side. and they're <laughs> He definitely <laughs> thought he was going to get a second tank and didn't. Yes. Right? Like, he was like, oh, all right, yeah. let me do a silly one. <laughs> <laughs> That's so close to exactly yeah. what he fucking did, though. Sorry, did you want Duchess falling down a long <laughs> elevator shaft? <laughs> oh, no, we're resetting the shot for a new part of the movie. Oh, oh God. Shit. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Also, can we point out that the Predator, the white guy with dreadlocks who mm -hmm. captures them here, they're called cyclos, yes. we're going to learn. Cyclos. In the book, yes. the leader, the leader people of the cyclos are called catrists. <laughs> so, cyclo catrists. Because L. Ron Hubbard hates all of psychiatry. Yes. He called the bad guys cyclocatrists. And the reason, by the way, that he didn't like psychology is because he's like, hey, guys, psychology, I figured it out. It's Ingrams. They're like, Do you, you are in the right place for the wrong reason, bro. Explain Engrams. Are those uh, fucking volcano demons? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm Show, a real you. <laughs> Show you who's schizophrenic. I'll kidnap my wife. <laughs> <laughs> that happened. So... But they take all the prisoners into this domed city. They stop to, like, I don't know, gas them, but then give them the, uh, the little nose things so they can breathe the alien air. Yep. Which is great, because now, like, through most of the rest of the movie, all of the human characters will have two little tubes going up their nose like this. It's so silly. It's, yeah, right, just in case. Like, they're running, it's constantly doing the Baywatch boob thing. Mm -hmm. You can see it, like, hitting the actors in the eyes yes. and them being mad. <laughs> like, you know when, like, your corded headphones get ripped out and you're fucking furious? Yes. And it's so viscerally, it's so, it's like a, an invasion of yourself, but you did it. The actors are all mad throughout. For the two hours of this movie. But it's their nostrils. But it's right. your yes. nose. And they filmed this movie Best. for a year. Yeah. <laughs> With the aliens giving their little breather tubes, and then they get flown somewhere else. 
this is the first time we really get a good shot of the city. And, and we have to point out that at the top of several of the buildings, to make it look less like a painting, they've CGI'd in this, these lava rivers that are <laughs> falling from the... They're, so they're making lava at the top of buildings <laughs> they're, they're, just to dump it over. This like, seems like a really inefficient way of lighting the city, like maybe? Like a cash crop of yes. magma? <laughs> what do you do? Oh, it's the volcano demons. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, okay. my God, you're fucking right. right. That's the Xeno, that's the story in Scientology. You're fucking Xenu right. the god 75 million years ago. Everybody knows this, but I'm just going to like mm -hmm. enlighten mm -hmm. the that's few trillion. people listening who don't. That god strapped a bunch of people on Earth to yeah. Volcanoes and then blew it up with a hydrogen bomb. <laughs> and now, any psychological problem you have is because of the them. volcano demons the, yeah. being ghosts from those demons. Yeah, yeah. grafted That's all to real. your soul. Yes. I just saved you a bunch of money. You it costs, can't even like yeah. hundred thousand dollars to buy that information. Yeah, right. And you have to fuck Tom Cruise. So. <laughs> I mean, You're that's what? worth something. Yeah, no, that's you're making it confusing. That's a now. minus. So. But I feel like the teeth Why did you just sell Scientology just now? <laughs> you get to fuck Tom Cruise, you get to kill David Miscavige's wife. Yeah, Forrest Whitaker will be in your movie, yeah. <laughs> so, but eventually they're taken to the Human Processing Center in Denver, Colorado. Yeah, that's where I'm going after I leave here. Denver. I really wanted them to, like, take them into the Human Processing Center and it's just, like, head shops and shitty vegan restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's Denver. It's, yeah, right. These humans really liked mountain climbing and hacky sex. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren Bobert's there. Somebody beats her on. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Most of All them right. were All polyamorous, right. it appears, <laughs> <laughs> in Denver. So they open up the cage. Johnny starts fighting back. He gets one of the guns and shoots one of the guards, and he runs off. And just in case I made that sound... Awesome, I should point out again that he's got the little tubes swinging back and forth <laughs> sideways the whole fucking time. Right, and the gun is a Wu-Tang symbol, so you can't accidentally fire it, right? He just, like, holds it, and then they're like, yeah, man, do it. And he's like, I don't, what, do what? <laughs> so, yeah. They didn't have to do a nose cord, right? Like, it feels <laughs> like it's a sexual thing for somebody. Yeah, right. So, like, Elron in the original source material, or Travolta, maybe, are into, like, nose cord stuff. Okay. All right. You didn't have to do this. Fair. There's so many ways to write. You can write whatever you want. But speaking of John Travolta, this is the moment where because he runs away from the bad guys and he runs right into. I have him as John Travoltoid in my in my notes. So this is the first time we get a really good look at the, what they've done for the aliens here. <laughs> White guy with dreadlocks. White guy with dreadlocks. Many Finnish. <laughs> Victorian rabbi. Yes. Conehead. Uh-huh, Conehead. On. Nine feet tall. Yeah, stilts, thank you. Eyebrows for days, lots of leather. <laughs> I'm done. Yep, that's it. Um, so, yeah, right? All no, right. no, he, he pulls it off. I'm not saying he doesn't pull it off. So John Travoltoid grabs the Johnny, and he drags him back outside, and he's like, how the... He goes, how did this man animal get away from you? I don't call them fucking horse animals. What the hell is that? Horse horses. <laughs> horse mammal. They're like, sorry, sir. He got the gun and he shot Dave. And, and, they're, and, the, and he's like, no, humans can't shoot Wu-Tang. They don't even have fucking triggers. It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> um, but no, they did. They, they, he's, he demands a demonstration. He's like, give him the gun. See if he kills somebody else. And he does. And he's like... In retrospect, that was a shitty way to find out, I guess. <laughs> it was a Whoops. terrible test. <laughs> it also takes fucking forever yes. in the scene, right? It's like the fucking Shane pick up the gun scene without the tension. <laughs> and I'll, I'll call Karen from HR to come over here and make you pick up the gun, <laughs> old so sheep farmer. Shane was a... It's fine. Yeah. So... Fred, will you just go around the aisles and explain to the young people? Fred's old. He's here. It's fine. Yeah, Don't no, worry that's like. <laughs> so, April, will you walk up and down? That she's also. I'll, all right, all right. I'll let you talk shit about Fred. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that night, Travoltoid goes to the space bar where they're playing fucking space billiards. <laughs> so stupid. 
Um, and they're and they're drinking bright green alcohol because they're aliens. Why do they want to change everything? So they changed the cup technology. Yes. Cup tech. Apparently, we settle on butt plug. There's like a flange, <laughs> right? Yeah. You drink from like bongs in the future. I guess that makes sense for no, safety sure. or yep. whatever. No. But why is like everything has Midori and none of the actors it? figure it out the entire movie. They constantly make these actors drink from these bongs, and they'll always be like, "That was my plan all up." Got it. Listeners at home, Eli is doing physical shenanigans. Yeah. Except for Forrest Whitaker, who demanded the biggest, silliest, oversized <laughs> yes. draw for Spite because he hated the movie on day one. It's the the best. drink is called Kerbango. So stupid. I bet, I bet Elrond's a tough read. So, and then so the Travoltoid and Bartenderoid start having this... They start discussing the premise, right? So, so he's like, ah, you soon will be transferred away from this planet to a much cushier assignment. And John Travolta's like, yes, I will. And he's like, it would be a terrible thing if that should not happen for some reason in the future. Yes, it would. That's the kind of conversation we're having. The Star Wars scroll is just watching from the corner being like, boring. <laughs> so, <laughs> show don't tell. But of course, this is the point, too, where... <laughs> This is the point, too, <clears throat> where... We have a time limit. Um, <laughs> but no, but this is the point, too, where Travolta, like, makes it clear that his plan is to double-cross the bartender guy because he's had some information on him this whole time that he hasn't been... But now he's going to tell everybody and get him in trouble because fuck that guy, right? Whatever the silly, maniacally evil thing to do in the moment would be is what he's going to do at every moment. And the guy, the bartender, goes, I had to write this line down verbatim. The bartender says, as a friend, couldn't you forget to file the report? The report being, you know, the thing that he did wrong. And John Travolta says, and I quote, well, as a friend, I could forget. This is how he does the entire movie, by the way. Yeah. I could forget to file the report, but unfortunately, I'm not your friend. Followed by... <laughs> Ha! 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 Morgan, don't cut this. Ha! 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 So much. It's so much. Ha! The emo cackling always goes on ha! for so long. It's birdemic esque. It just goes so on long. for so long. So, the <laughs> next day. We're outside in the prison when a fucking, the big boss alien comes in for a dog and pony show. Yeah. This is where right? we learn that the higher you rank among the cyclos, the more you look like the cowardly lion. <laughs> 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 Wait, is this skin mask neck guy? No, no, no this, oh, is, okay. this is, I had him down as Hoity Toy Toyd. He's the, he's John Travolta's manager. Okay. <laughs> so... And we learn here that this guy's here to assess John Travoltoid's performance. We also learn that Forrest Whitakoid is going to have... I'm sorry. This, I'm doing an L. Ron Hubbard style here. I'm not putting a lot of effort into this. They're all nine feet tall? Yes. yes. <laughs> With the boots? It's yes, because so they got four-foot boots on. It's fucking hilarious. But he's going to replace John Travolta when J John Travolta transfers out. Now, he introduces Forrest Whitaker as his executive assistant, Kerr. Yes. Now, that makes me wonder... If they have a secretarial system in this society, do they also have a cyclo version of the movie Secretary? <gasps> because I would watch the shit out of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's be clear. I would watch anything in the Battlefield Earth universe, yeah, okay? Um, and we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're watching it all. So, yeah, and this is where I first wrote in my notes. Why are they all playing this part? Like, their parts like they're making fun of a community theater performance of Hamlet, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody in there is, like, making fun of the very concept of acting. This is Forrest fucking Whitaker. He's a real actor. I just don't get it. All right. He's going to start pranking the movie soon, though, yeah, which is Yeah, he fun. does, yeah. Yeah, the rest of them aren't doing it on purpose. He's going to start pranking the movie. I, I think you're right. So, okay, so Travolta is giving Hoity Toy Toy a, a quick tour of the facilities. 
<laughs> and this is where we meet Testicle Neck, right? This, this is, is Neck Guy. Thank yeah. you. Okay. I got excited earlier, and I was like, is this Neck Guy? <laughs> neck. neck. And you know, we've all worked with this guy, right? Okay. We don't talk about it. And the new guy's always like, hey, what's with that guy's neck? And you're like, don't. He got, don't. <laughs> we think it was an accident when he was a kid. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> Why did they put this in the movie? They didn't have to make... They didn't have to. Giant that, neck guy. We literally, we watch Testicle Neck negotiate a contract. Testicle Neck is such an undersell and, of what's happening. And no one ever goes... It's bubbling like a cauldron of soup yes. for the movie. <laughs> and it's no so one, big. And no one at any point in the movie goes, well, of course, you know, he's a Bulgarian, right? To right, explain. that have big testicle necks. No, no. Nobody ever acknowledges it in any way. His makeup artist just had a heart attack halfway through, and they were like, <laughs> God damn it, no resets. <laughs> I feel like somebody got caught fucking a giant weird skin mask <laughs> in real life, and they were like, it's for the movie. I just wanted to... Wanted... That's for the movie. Hey, Craig, is your skin mask full of cum? No. It's a method. Did I'm you... putting it on. Did you make a giant pair of <laughs> testicles? Oh, it smells... <laughs> oh, it smells like a Loganberry bush in here. Okay. Oh, it smells like canned tuna. <laughs> it's not supposed to smell like canned tuna, That's... Eli. You need to wait, see a fucking wait, wait, doctor. Wait, wait. You really need to see a fucking doctor. I feel like doctor. Detroit can back me up that sometimes it smells like <laughs> canned tuna. Sparkle donkey tequila. No. So, <laughs> sometimes it smells like canned tuna. Sometimes your cum smells like tuna. So. Reposado. But this is. This is. Rested cum. <laughs> But this is, of course, where we learn that John Travolta is not going to get promoted. He's not going to get transferred out. He fucked some senator's daughter, and the senator's still mad about it. <laughs> so hoity toity toity is there just to dangle the promotion in front of him and yank it back. And then they all, like, cackle angrily at his misery. So, <laughs> and then just very briefly, we, we check in on the ridiculously named Planet Cyclo. You know how we live on planet human? <laughs> it's like that. And they have <laughs> random explosions that sci-fi feels the need to have. I feel like if you figure out intergalactic travel and teleportation, you also figure out the random roof explosions in your major cities. <laughs> but turns out, no, you did not. Apparently not, no. 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 Yeah, no, I wrote in my notes, like, why that can't be a painting. There are animated fire plumes in four locations, yeah. <laughs> So, but we see Hoity Toidoid teleport back in, and then we go back to the bar where Travoltoid is very upset, right? He's really mad that he has to stay on, on Earth, especially after he burned all his bridges. Oh, yeah, he's yelling, like, I went to an Ivy League, whatever, Cyclo University, <laughs> and he's naming his SAT scores and being an asshole. Yes. Like, I went to fucking NYU. How am I on a podcast right now? <laughs> I should have been on Broadway. <laughs> Learned to tap dance. Fuck. It happens. Wait, you have the I, same job as me. I do. <laughs> hey, Heath, I didn't even go to fucking college. So. <laughs> didn't, didn't you go to some, like, you got a degree in smart guy stuff or something? <laughs> so, <Yeah>. so... <laughs> Baked it. I, and, I, and I'll give you the exact line, because this is the most delicious line in the entire fucking movie. This is what he actually says, and I quote, while you were still learning how to spell your name, I was being trained to conquer galaxies. I drive a Dodge Stratus. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay. So the next morning, we go back to the prisoners. The next morning, they're feeding everybody with the big sludge gun. <laughs> so, why is that always the choice in sci-fi universes? They're always like liquid food. Like yeah, that's always right. the sign. That and weird games that children play. Yeah. Right? They've never just figured out ball and a hoop. They're always yeah. like, here, throw the krungnu through the walknot. Yes. So, so everybody's about to go up to the sludge trough to have their sludge. When suddenly some random guy does like a superhero landing right in front of Johnny Goodboy. <laughs> that's just, the, that's really the name. I just, my, my job Johnny has Good never Boy been Tyler. easier. <laughs> Johnny Goodboy Tyler. 
<laughs> yes, yeah. Johnny Goodboy Tyler. He lands and he's like, we eat from the sludge trough first. And Johnny's like, that seems like a weird flex, man. <laughs> My name is Al Fadog. Bad boy. I eat first. Bad boy, Tyler. And they fight. So stupid. Yeah, Johnny ain't having any of that shit, so we get the big prison fight. This is not one of those multiple hits in a single take type fight sequences. Uh, we get them one at a time. I mean, at least this has punching rather than fucking Glar Clar from HR reducing everyone's paid time off. <laughs> <laughs> that has been the movie up to this point. A lot of bureaucratic fucking paperwork that goes on in this film. Other people's yeah. work drama, the sci-fi <laughs> epic. <laughs> For real, we've already met literally the regional manager of space or we, whatever. We've met the assistant to the regional manager. Well, you actually space. literally met both of those things. It says it like Amazon. I looked yes. it, and it was like the character name. Yes. Fucking regional There's manager. There's an org chart. No. Watching them go through like those weird fucking bonding exercises. <laughs> but they all just let each other drop during trust falls. Because they're cyclos. <laughs> and then they cackle. Because they're evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so Johnny Goodboy wins the fight, and, and he's like, you know, now he has the power of the sludge, but he says, no, we shall now all eat the sludge together. And there's this great moment, right, because he sees the means of sludge production, and he <laughs> sure. holds out the sludge to uncredited extra girl number two, and she does like a... Mm -mm. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and Johnny Goodboy Tyler is like, we all eat together. And she's like, no, mm -mm. no. And it's, and it's dripping down his wrist into his sleeve and shit as he's holding it. Every, it's the, every time I bring Noah to a fancy restaurant, the yeah. scene. Yeah. It's yeah. a sludge tasting, Noah. <laughs> it's a flight of sludges, a flight idiot. Of sludges, yeah. You fucking rube, it's four different years. This of is sludge. just the amuse bouche sludge. <laughs> then we're going to get to the first sludge course. Oh, good. Yeah, no, that ties in really good to my throat. <laughs> it pairs with sludge. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. I guess I, I, I'm sure thinking about pea-based sludge is making Eli's vegan mouth water. So we're going to pause for a quick break. But we're back in a flash with even more of Battlefield Earth. <laughs> Bonjour, listeners. Tu aimes mon podcast? Bon, c'est très bon, mon podcast. Eli? Eli, uh, what are you doing? Oh, I was just showing off my French skills for our listeners. Nope. Not a lot of them know that I am fluent. No, nope, because like a... you're not. You are not fluent. Like 90% of that was nonsense. Or was it? It was. But if you did want to learn a new language, there's no better way to do it than Babbel. What's Babbel? I told you, it's that thing you were doing instead of French just now. I meant the product for this. Right, Babbel, the product, yeah. So this summer, you can start speaking a new language with Babbel. Why, Why Babbel? Babbel? Because, oh, <laughs> don't do that. It's because it works. I said it, and now I answered because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. It's true. Anna's been using Babbel to brush up on her French since they became a sponsor. And not only are the lessons intuitive and practical, but their speech recognition technology helps improve your punctuation and accent. So you don't end up in a new country talking about chimeras. Exactly. And here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash awful. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash awful. Spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash awful. Rules and restrictions may apply. Babbel. Language, the opposite of what Eli's doing. Disagreement. Okay. And then, once we have captured the man animal, we will make him mine through the gold without endangering our breath gas, all watched by our picto cameras. Sorry, boss. What's up? Yeah, I think maybe your translator is uh, having a problem. My speak translator? What's the matter wrong with it? Uh, you're, yeah, you're kind of doubling words. IBM? 
Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let me see it. Let me see it. Yep. Yep. There it is. Let me get it. I got it. I got it. Oh, wow. Thanks. I must have sounded like an idiot. I mean, more like a sci-fi hack trying to fill a per-word deal to support a coke habit, but yeah, yeah. Got it. And we're back. I love double dipping on the applause like that. And we're gonna we're gonna rejoin the action with paperwork. Um, now, <laughs> metal paperwork. Yes, metal paper. This is in so the future. <laughs> in a thousand years. Paper is very thick metal. It's metal, yeah. yeah. I feel like this, just this bit of space work was a prank on Forrest Whitaker. Because I feel like fully functional, in his element, well-rested Forrest Whitaker isn't doing awesome at paperwork. <laughs> but he's got two finger gloves and a fucking hat on. He looks like a Ferengi turned sideways. <laughs> and they were just like, now, Forrest, put the metal in the slot. And yes. he was like... <laughs> <laughs> I will remember this. Leaving your religion. I'm going to change my religion now. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so Going he's back doing, to being Jewish. <laughs> so he's doing his metal paperwork. And, Not a fan uh, of Jews yeah, here in Detroit. <laughs> so he's doing his metal paperwork, and John Travoltoid comes in, and he's, like, angrily glaring at him from behind. He's like, you know, you've done something very bad. And he's like, how do you know? He's like... Because I installed cameras, and he's like, sometimes you got to really rub the lotion in. Like when you're chafing, you have to just, that's, I was rubbing the lotion in Normal thoroughly. amount. But no, it turns out that Forrest Whitakoid has discovered a gold vein that he can mine, and he hasn't told John Travoltoid about it because he figured he was going to get promoted out of there, and then he'd be able to take credit for all the gold himself. Right? That's the plot now. John Travoltoid... <laughs> Oh, it's about to... I'm, I'm, let me, I'm sorry, let me make it dumber. <laughs> the aliens can't mine it, though, because, <laughs> they're, because there's uranium nearby, and their air... Sorry, their air? They, do you mean breath gas? I do mean breath gas. Do you mean that they're attached to a translation device, and they still say breath, breath gas? Breath gas, yes. Even though there's a word for that called air yes. that we have? <laughs> so they're... It's not a good translation device. <laughs> <laughs> so they're breath gasoid. If it comes into contact with uranium... Anything radioactive. Myth, anything radioactive, <laughs> yeah. it'll explode. Okay, but like, so much stuff is radioactive. <laughs> All over the world, we're like, yes. it's fine. Yes. It's I fine. really wanted bananas to be a secret weapon at the Thank end you. of this movie. <laughs> Throws it like a boomerang. We just watch. <laughs> <laughs> Camera pans up. It's Ray Comfort. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Did somebody call for a savior? <laughs> God, I just wrote such a better movie. Yep, yep. So, but they can't mine the gold. What they need is they need humans to mine the gold for them. This is very important. <laughs> it's not. It's so stupid. There's also this, there's this great moment where, like, he's angry at Forrest Whitaker, and he goes, like, he's going to shoot him, and he goes, you can't shoot me. That's against regulations. <laughs> <laughs> there would be so much metal paperwork to do. You have to put cover sheets on all the TPS... <laughs> It's so dumb. It's all uh, office politics for the next act. Yes. But yeah, he decides not to murder him. He's like, no, I actually, I need you to help me with my master plan. And I'm like, wow, you know, not trying to murder somebody beforehand is a much better strategy for getting to help you. But he didn't figure that out. Didn't think of that. So now we get Travoltoid. He's trying to convince the boss, Testicle Neck. That's the boss of the, everybody. Mitch McConnell, the volcano demon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mitch McConnoid. Um, he says... He's getting a massage. It's really creepy. It is. Yeah, right. They've got like four... And the, there's like three chicks massaging him and one chick just sort of rubbing his head like yeah. this. It's very clear that they paid for four actresses to be hot masseuses. And then the three paired up on all the human limbs and the fourth one was like, fuck do I... And they were like, just... <laughs> You can see this act just sarcastically being an actress, just like. 
See, I whoa, honestly... Whoa, 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 whoa. I went to NYU with Eli. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I came out better, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm not doing a fucking podcast, yeah. So, but Travoltoid says there's going to be a worker revolt amongst the cyclos. They're going to not want to work for them anymore. So instead, they need to train man animals on how to mine, right? Again, this is the plot. I have to go through this. I, I apologize. <laughs> but of course, all of the cyclos laugh at the very thought of lowly man animals being able to mine. Like they knew we had metal shit, right? They, we had, we had metal mining. shit when they showed up. Yeah. So, okay. Anyway. He says, what if I took them just out in the middle of nowhere to do some practice mining? Better if you don't know the location. <laughs> Why would that be better? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but testicle neck isn't sold on that. Yeah, this scene is Noah not letting me buy a billboard for I can fuck away your Lyme disease. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so right. If you right. want to know what that company meeting went like, <laughs> I even had a testicle neck. For yeah, it. no, it was and there was a lady thing, yeah. rubbing your head and everything. Yep. Yeah, that went to NYU. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we check in on the enslaved humans, still just hating life. Everybody's shackled together, and all of a sudden. A drunk spaceship driver. Everything goes wrong all it's of a sudden. It's so fucking yeah. stupid. This spaceship like hits a smokestack above them, and, I, and the smokestack starts falling on all the humans. Yeah, an episode of Citation Needed happens. Yeah. Like, all right. the, it's right. like Eli flies past in the Challenger somehow, <laughs> and then like <laughs> Tower 7 collapses onto Chernobyl, <laughs> and then like all the people of color in the movie die, and that actually does happen yeah, later. No. It's really bad. Cyclo driving the ship is like, I'm just going to keep going. I don't have insurance. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I love so much more shit falls on them than there was of that smokestack, mm. too. It just keeps falling, and you're like, come on, where the fuck would the rest of that be coming from? Uh, but of course, Johnny uses this opportunity to escape. His legs are shackled, but don't worry, he takes care of that with the old hit them really hard trick. Classic. And so he runs off, but he's not very good at escaping, so they catch him again. And they're like, okay, that's like the, he's, he's shot a dude and tried to escape twice. Let's, let's shoot him elsewhere. Wait till you get home. Everybody knows you don't shoot him now, <laughs> right? You wait till you get home. Right. So they drag him back inside the dome where, where the humans can't breathe, but the cyclists, the cyclists have to wear the little nose things when they're outside of the dome, right? Because they can't breathe human air or human breath gas. Breath gas, yep. Yep, no, get the terminology right. So they drag him back inside the dome for a quick game of how long does it take this human to die without his nose tubes? So they pull out this fucking alien stopwatch. I love the needlessly complicated alien tech. Because, like, I don't give a fuck where you're from. A stopwatch would still look like a goddamn stopwatch. Why would in, that be different? <laughs> in Cyclo, we have start, stop, pause for evil laughter, <laughs> Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> so, and it's shaped like the Wu-Tang thing for no reason, yeah. So yeah, so they take his nose thing, he's, he's suffocating, and he runs off, and they're like, it's okay that he's run off because the human can't survive more than four minutes. And I'm like, yeah, but, but you have a bet on how long he's going to last. You still have to like run along beside him and see when he dies. I like so, that yeah. they didn't think of that. They were like, right. fuck, we have to follow him now to get the bet. <laughs> <sighs> and they try to catch up, and he, he, he cheats a little bit, Right, because he comes across like fucking two minutes from where they are. There's a bunch of humans with nose tubes. And he's like, can I borrow a nose tube? And they're like, sure, man. Yeah. You seem to need one. I wanted him to go like one tube each, like headphones. Yeah. Yes. Right? That seemed go. like the right way to go, but they were hurrying off. Apocalypse off. Heath, one nostril, two different guys. Technically, the bet is still going. Yes, it is. Thank you. Still counts. <laughs> I'm winning. So the aliens shoot at him. He keeps running. Meanwhile, Travoltoid and Whitacoid are plotting, right? <laughs> this is so, this maybe the stupidest, well, not the stupidest scene in the movie. Maybe this fifth stupidest scene in the movie here. Because this is where Forrest Whitaker's like, I'm going to get a share of the gold, aren't I? And John Travolta's like, dude, I double-crossed you every single fucking scene, even when there's not a thing to double-cross you. Obviously, I'm going to double-cross you. And he's like, but yes. no, no, come on. Huh? I, should get a, 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 I should benefit from the plan as well. And he's like, all right, why don't you... Hold on, let me set up the camera. Why don't you tell me what the plan is, as though it's your idea? <laughs> Name the evil plan, but I don't know, like as a fun improv exercise, 
Do it in the first person. Yeah, if let's you can. do a little sketch. I have a little sketch that I wrote out where you came up with a plan. <laughs> what was and that? I'm trying to stop you. From I'm going to set it. up this circle light. One second. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> So yeah, so but he tricks Forrest Whitaker into pretending that it's his plan, and he gets video of him, and he's like, "Ha Now I have blackmail against you, so you can't double cross me later." And he's like, "Yeah, I, sh- I really should have seen that coming." Leverage. So yes, leverage. Thank you. Yeah, and we come back to that. So elsewhere, Johnny's still running through the sewers now. Travolta just happens to look at the sewer cam in that moment. <laughs> he's in the habit, apparently, of. Regularly checking the sewer cams. Yep. Like you do. Still a bunch of shit. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. I've seen some shit, man. He's watching um, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so. Where are we at in the movie? We can't possibly still be looking at me and Forrest Whitaker arguing about you've got something on your shirt. Yeah, no, no, he's doing There's a, a yeah. runaway thing. Nice. So, <laughs> so the aliens that lost him earlier, they catch back up with him. And one alien says to the other, he's like, I bet you I can shoot off one of his limbs without missing. And I wanted the other guy to go, like, man, this is how we got in this fucking problem in the first place, right? Can we just, you, it's your gambling addiction that got us here. We're all the fucking way in the sewers now. Just remember, shoot him now, wait till you get home. We got <laughs> fucked on that. Just center mass, center mass. He's the good guy. We're the bad guys. Center mass. Nope. No. But just then, Travoltoid sneaks up and shoots both of those aliens from behind because now he's figured out that that Johnny is the right man animal for his mining plan, right? Because, you know, who better to trust than the guy who has repeatedly tried to escape and shot someone to death? (laughs) To be fair, he has shot less cyclos to death than John Travolta. (laughs) No, you're right, you're right. So, oh, we should also point out that, like, this movie is prudish by the standards of god-awful movies when it comes to profanity, right? Because, like, he keeps saying stuff like, how the crap should I know? (laughs) I've got a few more of those in my notes. I just wanted to warn you. So anyway, so they're like, okay, so what we need to do, they were so proud of this stupid fucking shit. They're like, what we need to do is figure out what the humans like to eat so that we can offer them that as a reward. And honestly, if this was a flash cut to a scene where the Cyclos take the humans to a 1,000-year-old Buffalo Wild Wings, (laughs) I would be in. So... Do you guys all want Diablo sauce? Yeah? So, Sorry, this is hard to pour. These <laughs> fingers are fucking stupid. I gotta... <laughs> the sauce jars come out the bottom when the cyclos, so you gotta... We also, we also changed cup technology quite a bit. This butt plug thing isn't working out great. <laughs> so, and We're gonna I, make Forrest Whitaker do this later. So, <laughs> but it's not a race thing, we swear. But... <laughs> But the fucking, but the fucking plan here, they're like, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna let some of the humans think that they've escaped, and then we'll watch them from afar for several days until they find something to eat, and then we'll know that that's their favorite thing to eat. But they're captives. Like, you don't have to woo no. your captives. I, it's a weird note. Again, I feel like I strategize for the, peop- the bad guys, yeah. but that's weird. The fucking brain is coming up to them going, that's a convoluted plot, man. I don't think that's, all those steps are necessary. So, unless we see something cool, like, you know, the prison escape, we just cut to them having already escaped now, right? Or fake escaped. Let's watch them fuck and see which type of butt stuff they're into. (laughs) And then we'll offer, (laughs) we'll dangle that type of butt. No, just do whatever you want. You you have them captive. You you make that suggestion an awful lot for us, Whitaker. I I just want to point out that that you... Well, it felt apropos this time. That's why we got fired from the toy store. (laughs) how we ended up well it all worked out (laughs) so so we see johnny carlo and the guy that he fought for the peace sludge championship um those three (laughs) guys are climbing up a mountain together we have this sequence now again they they were so proud of this moment the 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 good guys find a rat and they're starving to death so they eat the rat and from that point on john travoltoid thinks that humans love rats they will milk that fucking shit for humor about 37 more times before this movie's over Right, they, 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 they become full-blown fucking Bugs Bunny villains at this point. I also, I love, too, they keep saying, like, oh, we can see them through the Picto cameras. <laughs> As opposed to what other kind of camera? <laughs> Stupid fucking shit. Okay. But then Johnny figures out there's a camera in their buttons. How the fuck would he know about cameras? Yeah, because he's watching the movie. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> 
It never matters, by the way. Like, it will never affect the movie. Nope. He's just like, and now this scene ends because I have literally destroyed the camera <laughs> film. <laughs> right, because immediately after that, we see John Travolta and First Whitaker finding them. Right, because like if that was like how they got away and then they couldn't find them later, it might make some amount of fucking sense. But no, immediately after that, they take a spaceship and they're like, well, I guess we gotta go get them. I like the idea of a spy team not knowing what to do with the information they have, though. It feels like, like some spy team is watching you via your TikTok and they're just like, what the fuck does China do with this information? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Hi, this doesn't help us. So, this doesn't help us at all. Someone's in China HQ right now being like, okay, so she's holding a hair iron and there's a popcorn kernel in it. And <laughs> thank you for the glizzy. Nom, nom, nom. And I... What I'm saying is I don't think they're a threat and maybe this whole thing was a waste of time. <laughs> and you're, what you're... is a pug a peg a court? <laughs> the ultimate counterintelligence right here. Yes, yeah, so, right? So the, bad, the, so the good guys are running because they can see that Forrest Whitakoid and, and John Travoltoid are, are right on their asses with the spaceship. They come across an impassable ravine. The good guy, Johnny, he's about to jump into the ravine to the river below. They're like, oh, you'll die. He goes to run and he goes to jump in the spaceship that Forrest Whitaker's in rises up of the, uh, out of the ravine that they were just looking down into. <laughs> like true lies with the Harrier jets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah exactly. <clears throat> right, and it's noisy as shit. I'm like, I feel like it would have been noisier in the ravine, yeah. though, wouldn't it, Morgan? <laughs> anyway, it's not a sneak up on you type vehicle is what I'm saying, but they all get caught. A Harrier jet being like, blunk, 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 <laughs> yes. blunk. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> it rises up, but it's dressed as a bush. Yeah. No. <laughs> Again, That's a normal spoiler yeah. alert. <laughs> so. I forgot how dumb the end of the yes, movie yes, is. Yes, exactly. As oh. bad as this is, the third act is so much worse. So, it's okay. important not to make jokes as we analyze this movie because we end up writing we write this it. We movie. write the yeah. movie. Yep. It's so, okay. So they throw the pea sludge bad guy that we never bothered to name. They throw him out of the ravine to see if humans can fly. They can't. <laughs> and then they take Johnny and Carlo back to fucking blue Dutch angle city or whatever. <laughs> and this is where <laughs> it's time to put Johnny in the spinny teaching chair. You never really appreciate the creativity of the babblefish till you see shit like this, do you? <laughs> He's in the learning. fucking learning. Machine. They call it the <laughs> fucking knowledge machine. It's so fucking dumb. So they're like, well, in order for them to mine, they're going to have to be able to speak cyclo. So let's put them in the learn stuff machine, like th from the Matrix. Now, the way that they visualize this is first by showing, like, literal charts and equations fly into Johnny's eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, it doesn't just teach him Cyclo, it teaches no. him like all the things he'll need for act three of the movie for right. some reason. And also, fucking Euclidean geometry and molecular biology for some fucking reason. We'll get there in a second. But my favorite thing about the lurometer meter thing mm -hmm. is that at one point they pull him out and they're like, Oh, he's not done yet. So the fucking learnometer is like an air fryer. Right. right? You just gotta... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think that's good yet. So... <laughs> Probably just stand here and watch it. Yeah, yeah that's what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, is it 400 degrees right away? It's when you design? smell it. Okay. You have to smell so, it. Got it. Okay. The other thing that's great, there, there's a moment where they now show us... knows A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Yeah. yeah. There's also this moment where, like, the, uh, they show us what it's like in the learning machine. There's this little, like, timid alien, this different kind of alien that comes up and says, Oh, I'm going to teach you how to speak cyclone now. And we just get, a, like, a, a good three minutes with this guy. I wanted to follow that story, the race of alien power bottoms that were just like, Ooh, <laughs> dominate me, cyclones. <laughs> that movie? That movie ruled. Yeah. So, but yeah, so, so now we can understand John Travolta. Battlefield girth. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Yeah. Thanks so much for yeah. coming out. <laughs> Big thank you to the Garden Theater. <laughs> 
So, and, and then, like, we also get a scene where, like, the good guys, the other good guys, they come in and they see Johnny, like, in the knowledge machine, and they're like, oh, rescue him from that. There's, like, charts and words flying into his eyes and shit. <laughs> so they pull him out, and he's like, no, that's actually, I was kind of into that. If you, if you wouldn't mind throwing me back in, there's, there's these power bottom aliens. It's, it's, it'd be a lot to explain. But he goes in, and he learns some more. And then that night, we get this, it's, it's so dumb. We're back in the prison. He's drawn a giant equation on the floor. Because, <laughs> because when you reach a certain amount of intelligence, you start just drawing equations on random shit, you know? And it's so big that, like, uh, he would have had to ask people to move, right? And right. He'd be like, if you guys could move over to the left and just try not to, because, like, the other part is over there where you're walking. He's known all of human knowledge for three seconds, and some guy's like, when are we going to use this in real life? And he's like, yeah. we are. We are. We're going to escape from slavery with this. He and he's goes, like, I don't know. I got a calculator in my pocket. <laughs> he's, he's teaching him about triangles. He goes, this is the entire basis of Euclidean geometry. I'm like, weird that the aliens also named their geometry after Euclid. After Euclid, <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> you should have seen the ships they came down in, all janky as fuck, never meaning. <laughs> Angles never quite connected. <laughs> Shit, land this thing. I think these guys are onto something. <laughs> we might be able to shoot our movies head on. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, Jesus. But what, so what's so funny about this? is that this is supposed to be him doing like, he's supposed to be saying smart stuff because he's just learned all of human knowledge, but the people writing it are idiots, right? So he's just going with sixth grade Snapple facts. The best he right? had was like equilateral triangles at all the 60 angles. degree. Like, come this, on, Nick, does, tell, does, tell something about the perineum or something. Like, I don't know. <laughs> be useful. You learned all the knowledge and you're not going to explain some. Come on. So... So yeah, so we get, the, now, now they're, they're power bottoms. the newly educated humans are like poking around in John Travolta's office. He apparently put him to work in his office for some stupid fucking reason that the movie doesn't explain to us. They figure out his secret code. <laughs> and it's password? Yes, yes. The his alien password, password is password, is password, password one, two, three. It's fucking MAGA yes. 2020, it's so good. <laughs> It's literally, they're like, well, we know his employee ID number. See if it's that. And it's like, no, it's not that. It's like, see if it's that backwards. It's like, well, this would be really fucking boring if it wasn't. Yes, fine. It's that backwards. <laughs> they figure out how the cameras work. Anyway, so then we, we check in back with his, with his girlfriend. We check back in with Chrissy, right? <laughs> we have a quick scene where his horse made it home. I told you the horse was fine. Y'all didn't believe me. So the horse makes it home. Uh, she looks and she's like, mm, I'm, I'm going to have to go out and rescue him. And the old guy's like, you're obviously going to end up in distress. <laughs> Fucking duh. Like, that's how the movie goes. And he's like, Chrissy, stop. Before you go, you need to fail the Bechtel test. <laughs> <laughs> Even harder than you already have. Let's talk about the man that matters. Yes, yes. Johnny Goodboy Tyler. His name is Johnny, <laughs> Johnny Goodboy. Goodboy. And that's the end of the fucking scene. Yep, that's, that's it. it. That's she will it. never matter again. Well, she'll matter. Will she? <laughs> she'll be in distress. She will be in distress. So, okay. So Johnny's back on the learning computer again. Travoltoid's mad that he won't eat his rat. So very funny. I think there's so much, so much mileage out of that. Now, what Johnny's decided to do is pretend that the knowledge machine isn't working, so they'll keep him on it longer, and he'll get more knowledge. And Forrest Whitaker's like, hey, what if he's just pretending the knowledge machine doesn't work so that we'll leave it on him longer, and he'll get more knowledge? And John Travolta's like, that would be stupid. What a stupid fucking plot, you fucking idiot. That would be terrible. <laughs> Why would our terrible knowledge movie? machine teach him things that we don't want him to know? And he's like, no, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so I'm Forrest Whitaker. Come get me, Mom. <laughs> I'm not having a good time. <laughs> they make me do a bunch of manual dexterity th stuff, and I feel like it's a race thing. Oh, Jesus Christ. They made me play Connect Four this morning. <laughs> so, it's a solved game. Yep. 
So they're like, all right, well, I guess this one's not, the knowledge isn't taken on this one. We should shoot him and try over. And then he's like, oh, no, I speak cyclo, right? So he starts speaking cyclo to him, using their language to tell him to fuck biscuits or whatever. <laughs> I love that the movie couldn't decide how to handle the language changing <laughs> yes. between English and cyclo. So they, they were just like, I think we cut the baby in half. Isn't that what it said in the box? And they, they would just <laughs> yes. did half a sentence, and then it was like, <laughs> Yeah, right, go fuck your biscuits. But he's like, but now the, the good guys have gotten a bunch of guns, right? Because he figured out where the guns were hidden, and he had the code. So now the other good guys have gotten guns, and he's like, take me to the transporter machine, or I'll have you killed. But the guns aren't loaded. How would you even load these? You have to put the Wu-Tang CD in through the top and then... <laughs> the guns are designed so stupidly that in that very classic trope scene where it's like, that's not loaded, he just holds it because they couldn't figure out how to load these guns. He's like, just, there is a loading that just, is done just trust to them. Me just trust that there's us. There's a way in which this is then loaded. So how are laser guns better than regular guns if you still have to <laughs> fucking load them? Right? Do they have to go to the planetarium and grab like a handful of those pointers and <laughs> feed them into the Wu Tang symbol? Double A batteries. So yeah, so the guns won't fire, but uh, Johnny explains he's like, but you you still can't kill me because I know your evil plan and I'll rat you out because I've been listening to you monologue about your evil plan for the last two days. Because I've been watching the movie. Yeah. <laughs> So, but then, this is so, everything is so dumb. It just keeps getting dumber from here. So John Travoltoid is like, well, I just have to prove to you, first of all, that you humans can never defeat us. So let me take you to a human library where all the books will have really held up well over the last thousand years. My God, he's bringing him to a drag queen story hour. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate brainwashing tool. So, <laughs> the evil library. Yeah, so he's like, read all of the human books and you'll see that there's no knowledge you could use that would be useful in Act 3. <laughs> okay, in my notes, I'm watching this movie. Occasionally, I just write down what's happening in my life. Mm -hmm. I, wrote down, I wrote down John Travolta in Dreadlocks, wearing nose plugs like a kid learning to swim, dragging a guy on a neck leash into the Denver Public Library. This is my life right now. Yes. I love that he's wearing four-foot stilt boots and you didn't even bother to mention and that, right? That wasn't even in your list. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Johnny starts reading all of human knowledge, starting with the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> Obviously. First pick. Yes. First, what's the greatest human book? Declaration <laughs> of Independence. So, I got some bad news for Forrest Whitaker in this thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're actually very clear about their policy. Terrifying. It's like the worst first date of all time. Somebody answers with, my favorite book is The Declaration. <laughs> 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 oh, no, I'm fucking that person. Yeah. <laughs> that person crazy. Yeah, maybe. The Da Vinci Code. Absolutely. No, no. Okay. go. All right. The White Paper About Bitcoin by <laughs> Satoshi Nakamoto <laughs> is my favorite book. So he's like, all right, now, now that you've had plenty of library time and you know that the, the human knowledge is never going to help you, I need to, like, really drive the point home. So watch me shoot cows. <laughs> well, not shoot cows. Let me stand near cows. <laughs> well, so he starts shooting these cows, and he's doing, like, he's doing, like, behind the back. Again, Yosemite fucking Sam, this bullshit is. And I, if it's supposed to be serious, the cow noises are ruining it, right? He's, <laughs> he's like, yes, yes. <laughs> so he shoots a bunch of cows. He's shooting their legs off, too, by the way. We see this. He's not killing the guys. He's just shooting their legs out from under them. It's like fucking alien cow tipping, I guess. But, but just then, a bunch of humans, a bunch of savage humans, run in and attack John Travolta. But Johnny, like, who is, you know, outraged in the name of animal husbandry or whatever, gets uh, John Travolta's gun, and he tells the humans, he's like, hey, you know, I, this is still act two. You know, the, he is the big draw. We paid him $10 million to be in this movie. 
So you can't kill him yet, but be on my side later on, like in Act 3, you guys can kick some ass. And they're like, all right, well, that sounds like a pretty good deal. I actually like that deal. Can we be featured? Go wrong. Can we be featured under five? Yes, some of you can be featured under five. Uh (laughs) Can we have crafty? No, you cannot have crafty. I love it. (laughs) It's mostly sludge paste. Yeah, right. It's, 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 yeah. So I love, too, that the way that they start is they're like, you know, the great gods have decreed that you shall not, like, attack our cows. And, and Johnny's like, actually, it turns out that your religion is wrong. And I'm like, people don't usually take that well, Johnny. I know from experience. <laughs> so you're, not, you're not winning them over to your side yet. But he explains, because, of course, he's read the, the Declaration of Independence, so he explains the value of freedom. Which has that great <laughs> steak recipe in it. I don't know if you've checked it out recently. <laughs> so. But he's like, no, we can't kill him now. I need to go back and learn more alien shit, right? And they're like, why? And he's like, because they have these power bottom aliens, these holograms. <laughs> I don't know. I know you don't know what that means, but trust me, <laughs> it's worth going back for. So all of the human savages leave, and he's like, and of course, John Travolta doesn't know what they're they're saying because he doesn't speak English. So then he says to him, in Cyclo, hey, I tricked them. They've all left now, and they're not going to attack you because I'm on your side. And, the, and he's like, okay, great, great. Quick, before we wrap this scene up, though, we do not have a damsel in distress yet in the film. Wait so, for it. Yep. <laughs> so Forrest Whitakoid lands, and they've got Chrissy. They've kidnapped her. And he's like, <laughs> this is a great one. This is one of the, the better dumbs of the entire movie. He's like, I don't know that chick. I don't know who she even is. And they're like, nice try. She had this sketch that she did of you using her thousand-year-old pencils. That, of all the dumb connective tissue in this movie... (laughs) Yes! You know her because she had a picture of you right up there. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, and and he's like, I'm going to put an explosive collar on her neck, and if you step out of line, I'll use this remote control to blow her up. Right? (laughs) And it works from anywhere on the planet. Like, they felt like you really needed to explain this one. Yes. Before you ask, everywhere on the planet. Why didn't they just, like, duct tape a big cartoon bomb to her head? Right. I placed her above this cliff edge, and she'll look down if you bother me. (laughs) (laughs) Everything Trolls says the whole movie is the meme with the drunk guy and the beer yelling into the girl. Yeah, exactly. Everything he says the entire time. So he's like, he's like, you wouldn't kill my uh, girlfriend. And he's like, oh, you don't, you doubt me? Well, then let me murder this unnamed character that you apparently have a connection with to demonstrate my point. And he's like, don't murder Dave. And we're like, we don't know who that is. I don't, I don't care, care about you, you Johnny. Good boy, Tyler. <laughs> He says, please don't kill him, please. And, and John Travolta's like, all right, fine, I won't kill him. But Forrest Whitakoid will <laughs> not. <laughs> Got him, idiots. Now sit on this whoopee cushion. I'm an evil alien. <laughs> All right, well, I think this movie has literally run out of bad guy cliches at this point, so clearly it needs a break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will the dumbest thing that has ever happened in a movie still happen? Will my complaints about the condition of the thousand-year-old mini golf course stegosaurus seem quaint in comparison? Will this be the movie that finally breaks me? Find out the answers to these questions and more. We'll return for the unapologetically stupid conclusion of Battlefield Earth. Foolish man-animal, our far superior species has conquered your Earth, and you are but worms at our feet. That's what you think, Cyclo. You doubt me, do you? Perhaps you are right, and I shall let you go. Except, I won't! Uh, Okay. You thought I was going to let you go, but then I didn't. I mean, not not really. You barely even paused, and I was Uh, just asking. Oh, well... Then perhaps I shall give you a reward for your cleverness by letting you go. Are are you actually? No, Hawk, that time you fell from my roost for sure. You fell for again, it that time. No, no, I just I just asked if you were cuz you paused again like weirdly. I see. Well, I guess you win this time, man animal. Hmm. 
Oh, but before you do, you have a spot on your shirt right here, man animal. No, no, I don't. I assure you, you do. It is a real big one, too. Very embarrassing. I don't, though. You sure? You'd you'd look very silly if you didn't check. Okay. You're go- yeah, got it. Uh, oh, where is it? Aha! You were fooled like the fool you are. <sighs> Gotta tell you, man, I'm feeling way better about genociding your planet at this point. I get that a lot. And we're back for even more of this shit. So we're going to rejoin our heroes being led back to prison, willingly, this time. Johnny's starting to doubt himself because, you know, he literally just got one of his friends killed with his bullshit. And of course, everybody's like, it's not your fault that unnamed character died, Johnny. And I'm like, it is, though. It, it is. 100% fault. your fault. Because they had an opportunity so to escape. Clearly your fault. And, you yeah. look down at the spot on your shirt, John Travolta blew up your <laughs> friend's head. That's how it fucking happened. Classic move. But all the prisoners want to join Johnny's fight. There's this great moment where, like, one random guy says, he speaks the cyclo language and will help us fight them. And everyone in the prison's like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> It It escalates so quickly, like a middle school playground. (laughs) It was like, this guy can speak psycho. Oh, my God, who said that? Fight, 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 USA, (laughs) USA. Morgan sucks. Canada's the worst. (laughs) Yeah, fuck Toronto. Exactly. (laughs) Detroit. (laughs) So... You think you're so much better on your side of the river because your homeless people aren't dead in the street. (laughs) Well, let me tell you something. We like them that way. Saves our cops bullets. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I read your newspaper. I'm from New York, and I'm like, come on, guys, a little much. (laughs) Anyways, the movie? What yes, happens yes, next thank to you. the movie? Thank you. So we got back to John Travolta at the bar. This is where we're going to meet his um, extremely long-tongued secretary. You would think. You would fucking think. Right? But no. They have this chick in there. She's like, oh, she's got a four-foot tongue. And we're all like, huh? All right, all right. But then they have her, like, kind of lick his shirt all weird. And you're just like, don't. That's... Uh, there's... There's like four things you could have done with that tongue that I wouldn't have been into, and that's one of them. And so don't show it. Don't show John Travolta being like, don't lick my shirt. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have that's the weird. courage Cut. to show us cycloanalingus. Right. Don't tease us with cycloanalingus. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. Thank also, you. Also, sorry, I, I have to quote one moment here. Does she not say, I'm going to make you as happy mm-hmm. as a baby... On a straight diet of Kerbango, which is a green liqueur from the future. Yes. yes How so happy happier is a baby that a only drunk drinks baby. liquor? A, a starving drunk baby. Very starved. Yes. I'm not saying it's a low number. I'm just saying, how much is it? <laughs> That's weird to not tell us. And why is it an expression? <laughs> Well, that's, that's an important one there. Is she the cyclo version of an Irish mom? Like, what's happening here? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean by that? You know how when you... I don't... No, no, no. I don't think we I'll need explain. to... I'll explain. Let him explain. Let him explain. Let him explain. You know we how... We only when... have this theater for <laughs> until... So like they say that we have to be out by... <clears throat> so, okay. But, but what we I learned... I wore underwear for them. They owe us. <laughs> No one in this room has seen my penis. So, well, Very that's, it, that's incorrect. Yeah. yeah. Not... Fight, fight, <laughs> fight. <laughs> you couldn't see it from way out there anyway, so... <laughs> so... <laughs> so anyway, so, so now the secretary, though, is going to find out... She's going to lick testicle neck's ass and get, like, a hold of his shady accounting, right, so they can get some blackmail on him. So we cut to uh, Travoltoid and Winnicoid confronting Testicle Neck about this shady accounting, right? He's like, it looks like we've got leverage over you now. And he's like, wow, I guess whatever I was holding up is now not a problem for the script. I... They're like, we won't tell the, the big boss that you've been, you know, like hoarding money or whatever. 
if you'll sign all these blank permission slips for us. <laughs> yeah, and testicle neck is like, not document fraud. Yes. <laughs> like, I know people make a big deal about like, oh, everyone in Hollywood has read Save the Cat, so all the movies are the same. But the alternative is not document fraud. It is weird, though, that we're all taking instructions from the guy who wrote Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. That's true, yeah. Um, <laughs> the best movie ever written. <laughs> that was a great movie, thank you. <laughs> Barbenheimer or My Mom Will Shoot. Yeah, right. It's the ultimate so, trilogy. So, and then we, so we get, we cut back to Johnny. He's back in the, uh, or sorry, he gets it back in the knowledge machine, but then also they have to teach him to fly spaceships so that he can mine. What? Why? Why? Why would uh, any of that... Those are three great questions. They, okay. <laughs> we are 1,000 years into the future. They're flying across galaxies. They must have something like Tesla's autopilot, right? You would think. But well, there's like so, a, maybe something that works. But, yeah, but like a, a good... But like, a version that works. Like yes, a yes. Ver, they don't... But they have like a strong Teamsters union? So I they're guess. like, we have to teach this guy. Oh, just some guy sitting out in front of the mining operation with a giant inflatable rat. <laughs> 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 so yeah. So John Travolta is basically like, hey, here's a book on how to make fucking escape blueprints, but don't use it. He's, he's like, he's going through this training, this spaceship training program, and he's like, video game better or I'll blow your girlfriend's head off. I wrote my notes, Heath says that a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not... I don't like titles. He said, right, right, yeah, I was gonna say. He's, I love he's, you. He was, he was about to say, no, it isn't, and then he's like, oh, but Mario Kart, wait, you're right. No, you're right. I did, I literally... So, <laughs> And I was like, fuck, that's accurate. Yeah. So, but, it, but the key, though, is that they're very proud of these PS2 graphics or whatever. This, so we watched this flight simulator for a fucking while. We're watching while. the audition for the Battlefield Earth roller coaster. Yeah, right. So silly. Like, t we're watching Top Gun Maverick, but, like, yeah, on a Game Boy for, <laughs> right. like, a good five minutes. <laughs> yes. Don't show all so, well, Game Boy Bottom Advance, gun. but, yeah. So, so Travoltoid and Whittacoid, finally, they take them out to the gold mine. There's this great moment where they're trying to take them out there, but of course, remember that the aliens can't go all the way out there because there's uranium in the air. So they have to show... <laughs> there's uranium in the air. Right, there's... I'm sorry, in the breath gas. In the breath gas. There's uranium in the breath gas. So they have to show the negative effects of the radiation in the breath gas. <laughs> we that, get these tiny little explosions. Is that a vulture of horror attacking? <laughs> I think it is. Because it makes our breath gas explode, so it's, it would oh, probably yeah. make it explode yeah. a little. So. We breathe neutrons out <laughs> like a gun of neutrons. <laughs> so yeah, so John Travolta's like, so you, I can't go any further, but you guys go on to the gold. I'm going to give you two weeks, and when I come back, I want this cage half full of gold. I'm like, that's a weird instruction. Everything's so Why dumb. Why wouldn't it be full? I, just, I, just, I don't know. Just demand full. 43% full of gold. <laughs> so they go to start themselves this space mine. Oh, I, we, 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 I forgot to mention that when Johnny was like deciding to like, he was going to lead the people in rebellion, he starts cutting off locks of his hair to hand to people in some symbolic thing or whatever. So now he has cut <laughs> his hair into a fucking mullet. <laughs> I like the idea that there's a jerk who he had to give hair to just because otherwise he was going to look weird. Right, right. right. It was like, oh, look, it's Pervy Dan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, I don't want to look like a fucking flock of seagulls performer, so yeah, there you go. I'm you're going to save you're this. Gonna, yeah, you're going to... You're gonna jerk off with my hair. I love you that. Yeah. I love that when Eli decided he was going to go with Pervy Dan, he's like, I can hand Heath the, um, the hair. That'll be fine. They'll get it. So, okay, so... Jo uh, listeners at home, Heath is being pervy with Eli's imaginary hair now. A little bit of real. There was a little bit of real. There was a little... Oh, okay. You, you right. never well, wipe the cum from your face after the mime. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's what, what we always so say. <laughs> so, Sparkle okay. donkey. <laughs> <laughs> never wipe the cum from your face after a mime. <laughs> Tequila. 
so Johnny decides that instead of mining the gold, which would be a whole big thing, they're actually going to go to Fort Knox. <laughs> <laughs> to save the teen center. From Denver. <laughs> From Denver. We can see how fast the ship's going, like, 45. <laughs> right? This would be a 39-hour... As the crow flies, it'd take them 39 fucking hours to speed this ship's going. They also... Those are gold ingots. Yes. So this oh. guy, John Travolta, the alien, oh. is expecting uranium They're gonna with explain gold. It. They're it's gonna it's explain. all going to get explained. He and sadly enough, that <laughs> act, I wrote that down as a joke, and he will be like, I made them into ingots yes. for you. Yes. <laughs> and John Travolta's like, thank you. Yep. This so, all tracks. So, yeah, but luckily, luckily their ship has infinity fuel, so they go... All the way to D.C. They, they was going to Fort Knox wasn't far enough, so they go all the way to D.C. Had to a weird layover in Dallas. <laughs> right? <laughs> Thousand-year so, airport, somehow Hudson News is still open. <laughs> <laughs> so the line to, at Starbucks is still really long yeah, for some reason. Yeah, right, right, yeah. So they head over to the Library of Congress for some maps. These maps are doing very well for being a thousand years old, yo. And then they go to Fort Knox. <laughs> And they go, yeah, I know, there's just this moment where I'm staring, I gotta explain to the audience, there's a moment where I'm staring at my nose and going like, was it really this fucking dump? Yes, it was really yep. this... They're like, all right, here's what we'll do. We'll fill the cage all the way up and we'll hide half the gold in the mountains since he only wanted a half full cage. Anyway, so they do that. Couldn't we have brought half... Shut up! Get shut the up, fuck out! Up. So then we get, we get John Travolta checking in on him two weeks later. And he, 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 they're like, here's that half uh, thing of gold that you wanted. In ingots. In ingots. He goes, why is it in bars? And we're like, thank you. And the camera goes like, does anybody have yeah. the answer? And then Johnny says, he's like, well, I didn't think you'd want just or. Because you guys are so, you know, refined. <laughs> and that was, that was clever wordplay with yeah, refined. No, it was, it was. The movie didn't think of it. <laughs> they did not. Only Noah did on that one. Yeah, yeah so, correct. So yeah, he's like, no, we smelted it for you. He's like, oh, well, if you smelted it for... How? <laughs> we held a lighter under the oar for a really long time. You'll notice there's this giant spoon over here. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, A squared plus B squared equals C squared plus smelting ingots. Gold yeah. ingots. So Travolta checks it with his goldometer, though, and it is gold. That's the so, best. <laughs> that, you never appreciate how much fucking Star Trek makes that look good until you yeah. see John Travolta be like... <laughs> yup, gold. that's yeah, gold. It's, gold. That's, it's, gold. That's, it's fucking gold right red there. Gold. So Travolta... I killed my son. There was did, a whole fucking the... discussion. We had a whole fucking discussion. I okay. didn't do the whole bit. I just said... The, I didn't do... The, we, the part we said not to. We agreed. There was a, no, originally there was a doll for that there bit. There was so a it is mime, more, it could, and could I did none worse. of the mime. So... Okay. I didn't talk about the photos. All right, all right. So... Eric Clapton killed his kid, too. So, okay. He did. At two, he... <laughs> All right, Morgan, and I'll give you a clean cut in two, three, one. <laughs> so, so Travoltoid comes in and he's like, he's like, you have seven days to finish all of the mining and get me more gold ingots. So now there is a real ticking clock going on here. So now the, the bad guy, the good guys are making their plans, right? They're going to blow up the dome so that the aliens won't be able to breathe. <laughs> We, you know what we should do? We should just fly to Manhattan, find that project. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like we did at Fort Knox, but with yep. a bomb. Right. And now we'll have... And seriously, though, that's... That is what they fucking what do. do. Yes, yes. So everybody fucking yells and dog noises in agreement that that should be their plan, right? You know what we should do is find Ocean Gate, the company. Yes. <laughs> and we should find the, just the perfect vehicle. <laughs> so... So they go to... To be clear... Credits. To be clear, what we establish here is that the good guy's plan is we're going to genocide their planet first. Right, right. Yeah, we're not there yet, but yes. So, <laughs> so they go to Fort Hood, Texas to arm up for their big Act 3 rebellion. 
Love this. They were like, where do we get all the genocide stuff? Probably Texas, yeah, right? Really. Yeah, Texas. Oh, that's right. That is correct. Probably no, Texas is nailed. correct. And we watched, them, clock. we watched them unveil the airplanes that they're going to use. And one of the guys goes, flying spears. And I'm like, dude, you've been mining for six fucking months. <laughs> is it? Enough, okay? <laughs> all right. Also, spears, that's already a thing, right? They already fly. Spears. That's it's a whole big spear. Are there crawling spears that you're using? <laughs> I wanted him to get an intervention. Hey, Steve, um, everything's not a fucking spear, okay, yeah, man? Yeah. yeah. So, now, you might be thinking to yourself, wait, did Eli just imply that they found airplanes, working airplanes? Sure did. A thousand years from now, unmaintained? We're just- going to mine some oil. Right, and refine and yes, it. Right, and, <laughs> and some jet fuel. Jet fuel. Some thousand-year-old jet fuel. And, and you might be thinking, well, how in the world would they know how to fly those Harrier jets that are doing just fine? Well, luckily, there's a flight simulator. Yeah, that is powered by electricity. <laughs> With electricity! Yeah. Yep. Well, I, okay, the Texas power grid... <laughs> It is, notoriously, it is notoriously robust, is it, is it not? not. I, I feel like <laughs> it's safe. It's fair to say that it's improved with age like a oh, fine yeah, wine. Yes, yeah, right. 1,000 years into the future. I felt, so, I felt so dumb because like they first go into Fort Hood and I'm like, what the rubber tires on those APCs after a thousand years? And then there's like the Harrier jets still fly, Noah. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> uh, the fucking peanuts are still good. They're like, ooh. <laughs> Mr. Peanut died. Do you guys remember when they did that? They were like, hey, what's a good way to get people to eat peanuts? Let's fucking kill our mascot. <laughs> oh, like you never wanted to kill Mr. Like Peanut. Like John Travolta's son. <laughs> I watched Noah fall for that. He was like, oh, good, he's on beans. <laughs> so, Morgan, now, fuck. Now, of course, we should point out that the Cyclo home planet's atmosphere will ignite with a nuclear explosion. So that's how they're gonna, they're like, you know, oh, if we kill all the cyclos with the dome, they're gonna just teleport in more cyclos. So we need to xenocide their entire fucking planet with a nuclear bomb. Luckily, they look under N for nuclear bomb at Fort Hood. Sure. And they're like, oh, look, that's nifty. I love the self-sacrifice conversation they have here, right? Because <laughs> yes. they've got the nuke, right? And he's like, I'll teleport myself to the planet and die for the cause. And the other guy's like, no, let me do it. And Johnny Goodboy Tyson is like, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's a good argument. I didn't think about it like okay. that. Okay, but you said they have the nuke. To be clear, they have 1,000-year-old jets and they pull out a loose handful of uranium? I guess. From a mint, like it's a, like yeah. a Pez dispenser. <laughs> They're just like, huh, uranium, and then we'll send this but, to But them. here's the other thing, too, is like that we have established that just uranium existing in their atmosphere is enough to blow up their entire planet, right? No one has to sacrifice themselves for this. They could just put the uranium on the fucking teleporter and be done with it, and they're still having this, but I get to be the one that dies heroically in Act 3, damn it, fight. She... Okay. I don't want to be a Scientologist I feel like they anymore. all had a meeting beforehand, and they were like, hey, I bet we can get Frank to kill himself. <laughs> so, Jesus Christ. Hear me out. You know that remote-controlled nuclear bomb thing that we're going to watch him use a remote with? <laughs> yeah. What if we just told him, Frank, you got to go, buddy. Yeah, that's fun. Morgan, you got to introduce us, otherwise they won't know this show is starting. <laughs> So then we, we, cut to, we cut to Travoltoid. He's got his gold ingots. He's packing them to go. He's packing them in, like, uh, coffins, cyclo coffins. Yeah. Moving the gold like the CIA sells heroin. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Very right? smart. <laughs> so, and then this is where Johnny approaches Forrest Whitakoid and talks him into turning on John Travoltoid, right? He's, like, checking the humans or whatever, and uh, Johnny Goodboy... <laughs> So stupid. We're all the way through the whole entire show. I still can't say it with a His straight name's face. Johnny Good Boy. Johnny Good Boy shows up and he's like, hey, you know, John Travolta's just going to screw you over when this is all said and done. And he's like, no, he would never. Oh, fuck. No, you're right. He no, will. I, think I was watching the movie the whole time. He's yeah, been so double crossing <laughs> me constantly. Forrest, if you join our side, the movie will be over. Yeah, right, right. I'm in. So, yeah, and, and he's like, I have actually the, the video that 
John Travolta got earlier of him admitting that it, the plan was really his. He's like, I've got that video right here, and I'll give it to you if you join our side. And he's like, you'll give it to me because I'm going to shoot you. And he's like, actually, we're going to play a complicated game of keep away. And he's like, fuck. <laughs> fuck, there is no defense against keep away. I didn't think of handing it to someone. Damn Shit. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. So he's like, I'll give it to you, but you have to let all the humans go and take the neck thing off of my girlfriend. And he's like, well, that would diffuse all the tension in the film. He's like, meh. All right. Leverage, motherfucker. <laughs> right. Don't worry, our dome's not even going to be a dome. They're not going to overthink yeah, this right, part, right, Forrest. Yeah. You're good. So later that evening, we get Travolta, and he comes in on Whittacoid, like, watching the security footage, watching the video that he's not supposed to have, you know, like, kind of like, you know, showing off. He's got his fucking... Kerbango, you know. And his giant down. straw. Giant straw, yeah. It's, the, it's just the drunk person with the straw, like, hitting it in your eyeball. He doesn't care. Chasing it with his tongue. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 Eating maraschino so like, cherries off of it. He's like, I should just <laughs> kill you for this, uh, for your impudence or whatever. And, and Forrest Whitaker's like, you can't kill me. I made a copy of this, and I gave it to somebody that we both know, and he's like, oh, the only other character that we both know is the fucking bartender, and, and, and Forrest Whitaker's like, fuck. And fuck here he is. is his head! It's so dumb. So, but like, literally, that is what happens. So let me tell you, let me walk you through what John Travolta's day was like. Because he didn't come in with a bag. Right. This is a weird day. So he went, and he was like, hey, bartender, come here a second. Whop! Cut his head off. Put it inside his fucking duvet. Sorry, carry it home. Right, on carry a it subway. home. Everyone was like, what's that? He was like, nothing. nothing. Put it in <laughs> the Melon. duvet. Then left his apartment and was like, <laughs> oh, hello, Forrest Whitaker. Hello. I see you're here. Hey, how's Do you, you mind going? sitting in that chair over there? I would, just I, I've got I, would, a, I would prefer to sit in this chair. I really need to get to the duvet. You need me to sit over there for something? Bartender hands! Ah. <laughs> what if he hadn't double-crossed him? Right. He would have had to improvise and been like, oh, you're loyal. Well, as a gift. It smells weird here. <laughs> I got you. What did you get me? You had it ready? Bartender head. Yeah, thank you. Puppete fun puppeteering opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's hard to pick it up. <laughs> so John Travolta it shoots his hand off in Vengeance. I, actually, I think that's just Forrest Whitaker said, I'm not wearing this fucking glove anymore. Yeah, exactly. So, he looks mildly annoyed. So, the, and the guards come in that morning. They find that all the humans have escaped in the night, right? So they're looking for the humans. Johnny and his operatives are now at the landing zone trying to enact the big plan. We're getting into the you know, big Act 3 action sequence now. You can tell because the only good guy of color gets shot at this point and killed. Rough. Yep. He's like, none of you should have dreadlocks. I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> so. This is problematic. Ugh. And apparently part of the plan here is for the humans that have escaped to, instead of, like, leaving, run around breaking windows and just causing trouble in general. Antifa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're breaking the windows. The bad guys are coming for Johnny. Johnny runs towards them. He uses the old, I'm going to run at you in slow motion. And you're going to miss because I have plot armor technique. Yeah. The hero it's so long. It's like a good, I'm going to say, four minutes it's of this. forever. This slow-mo shot, it was just bad guys miss for four minutes. Like, yeah. like the Bugs Bunny slow pitch yeah. that strikes yes. out yes. like 27 hours yeah. worth of people. Yeah. And it's a perfect game. Flash cut to stormtroopers watching the movie. Those guys fucking suck. All right? <laughs> I'm going to aim your fucking gun. So, that, so then, then we cut the to... Screen crawl. Then we cut to, I shit you not, two Harrier jets <laughs> hiding. Clunk. Be Clunk. very, Clunk. very quiet. Clunk. Yeah. Clunk. They're, they're floating, hiding inside a bombed out building, waiting for the bad guys to come by so they can slide in behind them. Now, they might as well be reading a newspaper. Like, so silly. Yeah. Now I, I was say, worried about those jets, but they were whistling loudly as we came by. So <laughs> I think we're okay. Now, and I have to say, it is very difficult to make Harrier jet versus spaceships over a ruined city boring. But this movie is up to the Do fucking challenge. Do not underestimate <laughs> this movie. <laughs> 
So they start biting a bit. The Harrier jet runs out of missiles. We know because the button that says no more <laughs> missiles. <laughs> I feel like you have a shorter term for that, right? So the pilot doesn't have to read. It's no more. Just like, so you know, Craig, we are currently out of missiles so in long. this particular jet plane. So continue. You so if write, you want more jet plane <laughs> missiles, you're going to... I'm not Craig. I traded to... All right, but no, I get it. No. I get it. So, Why would they have... There's six missiles. What? You couldn't just... Five, kind of, four, three... Okay, yeah, right. Like well, an on-air side? <laughs> and then the guy, he crashes. He's like, oh, I don't have any more missiles. I'll just crash my plane into the spaceship. He jumps out like G.I. Joe cartoon style, though. Oh, that's... it's the He rams... <laughs> he rams the bad guy with his jet from behind, and he, but he does like a tuck and roll out yes, of his jet. Yes, exactly. Just yes. in time. <laughs> so He's somehow under a desk. <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> So, so meanwhile, Suicide Frank is going to teleporter away. Johnny has to break in and, and run the teleporter computers in order for this to work, right? So he's almost done it, but just as he's about to hit the make it happen button, John Travolta comes in and he shuts it down. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? The tension is so thick. He, he might as well enter the scene with, the movie's not over yet. Yeah, right, right. right. I cut off that guy's head. <laughs> it's in a different room. Come, it comes yeah, to so, the other so, room with yeah, me. So, yeah, I, thought I thought you we would gonna... triple cross me <laughs> elsewhere. Just sit there. So, so then they blow the dome, right? They blow the, they, well, they, they, made the, they have the big explosion. The dome doesn't quite explode, though. It cracks, but it doesn't fall. And we know this <laughs> because random people in the crowd yell out, I shit you not, it's cracking, but it's not falling. You know how what was missing from Independence Day was that guy being like, honey, I'm home, and then being like, did not quite do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> ah, nuts. I loved that it was, they were kind of, it was like, this dome is very well built. It was like, the, the guy trying to rip the Antifa sign and being yes. like, it's really hard to get it started to rip so, it. Mm. So. It hurts my hand on the side. I cut it. Not enough action movies have the stakes of that needs a nudge. Yeah. Well, right. <laughs> and then, but it actually needs a double nudge, right? Because Carlo, remember Carlo? Right. Yeah. Right. Go fuck yourself. So Carlo, who we care deeply about, is like, I will sacrifice myself and run into the dome. So he runs into the dome. Still, nothing happens. I wanted him to be dead so bad he wasn't. But but it turns out that the airplane he was in is filled with explosives, and he just noticed that. <laughs> Seems like the kind of thing you'd check for. And so he shoots, he has to shoot the explosives, but this movie is so poorly blocked that they're on the wrong side of him. Yeah. So right. he has to do it like an awkward crokinole shot. He's, He's gonna be like, okay, I lean. All right, one uh, butt cheek I'm, has to stay I still. I need to You're just gotta... be Heath and get into his Ryanair seat. <laughs> <laughs> and then shoot a bazooka the other back way. <laughs> Fuck. I have a cramp. cramp. I have a cramp. <laughs> so, why didn't I buy the more space seats? <laughs> so while, why, why, while he's trying to do that, we cut down to where the humans are. Chrissy is leading the human rebellion because she's the only other named character. And we get this random guy in the back. Or the, the, the humans are losing now, right? Because the dome hasn't fallen. They're at the lowest point. And there's this guy in the background that shouts out, they're killing us! <laughs> Who are you talking to, bro? I wanted one of the other humans to be like, we know, Alan. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Another one further away. Sorry, what? What were you guys talking they're about? Kill Alan what just, did he say? Alan just said they're Alan killing us. The, who's killing us? The aliens. The bad guys in <laughs> yeah. our movie? Yeah. We're losing. Mm -hmm. Fuck. I know, right? And then, oh. We're like losing spears. The movie. <laughs> And then another guy goes, we're not going to make it. <laughs> it's like, well, not negative Nancy over here is not going to make it. Well, I want one power of positive thinking human to be like, maybe we will. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm doing okay in late stage capitalism. <laughs> you got to manifest, man. <laughs> so, so just then, Carlo blows up his spaceship, and now the dome's really cracking, and all the humans are like, you know what? That shit's gonna fall on us. 
We have not thought this shit through at all. That shit's going to fall on us. <laughs> that right. shit is falling on us. Now, <laughs> ow, ow. <laughs> so, so to be clear. I'm in the movie. The human's plan was we blow up the sky <laughs> above an entire city and then we hustle on down <laughs> underground. Yes. 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 So we get all this, we get this long sequence of like the glass from the dome is falling. Now they don't have glass. They can't even get like big panes of sugar glass. So what they've done is they're dropping big blocks of ice. <laughs> but not like large sheets of ice. For some fucking stupid reason, they have it stacked sideways like books on shelves. And they're just dropping these books of ice next to people. And we're like, what are you even going for? Shenanigans. <laughs> it looks like a controlled demolition is what it looks like. <laughs> oh. Right? <laughs> Thousand-year-old jet fuel doesn't burn that hot. <laughs> Impossible. I love it at this point. The buildings are falling down left and right, but only on the bad guys. The buildings know who the bad guys yeah. are. And just then... No Jewish people in this scene. <laughs> Weird. Weird. That's right. That's Except right. Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> so, but just then, uh, John Travoltoid, he, he activates the teleporter array so they can send more... Bad guys, but apparently the teleporter array is two-way, right? Because this guy with the nuclear bomb has just been standing on the teleporter, like, trying not to get noticed. Like this. <laughs> for, like, the last 20 minutes during the fight. So now they turn on the teleporter. They teleport the bad guys to Earth, but at the same time, they accidentally teleport him to planet Cyclo, right? John Travoltoid gets stabbed in the neck with, his go with the Godstone. He's still got that. <laughs> And then, oh, and this is the point where he, like, he's, because he's still got the neck explosive that was around his girlfriend, that was around Chrissy earlier, and as they're fighting, he's, like, surreptitiously attaching it to John Travolta. It's a giant metal collar. Yes. And he's like, struggle, struggle, click. <laughs> I bet you can't blow up my girlfriend's neck from there. <laughs> You know, you said that remote works from anywhere on the planet. I'm not sure I believe you. <laughs> so yeah, so they blow off his arm. <laughs> he's like, "Oh, thank you for reminding me." And he pulls out his little controller and he blows his own arm off. And for some reason, they've decided that like when the aliens get one of their limbs blown off, they're just mildly inconvenienced by it, right? Because him and Forrest Whitaker both are just like, "Well, that's gonna be a whole fucking thing now, is it?" <laughs> It's like when you get your pants wet while you're washing your hands. You're like, oh, man. Let's Everyone's going to think I myself. blew off my arm. <laughs> 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 Which is great if you pee yourself all the time, by the way. Yeah. What if I blow off all of my arms? Stupid. <laughs> Fuck. So, but let's not... You know when you pee your entire... Nothing. Yep, yep. So... <laughs> so, but at any rate, so, so Suicide Guy has been teleported now to the Cyclo homeworld. So he explodes an entire planet and kills off all the living things on it. Hooray! Yay! A heroic xenocide. Yay for the good guy. Yeah. Just like Xenu, <laughs> the <laughs> overlord of the Galactic Confederacy. It's actually called the Galactic Confederacy. Yep, it is. It is. The, the, he did that to the volcano demons. Yep. Yep. And it now sure he's in a, a wire cage in a secret location <laughs> in the Pyrenees, maybe. Maybe. We don't know. You need to respect our sincerely held religious beliefs. Yeah, and if you want to know for sure if it was the Pyrenees, it's just going to cost you $200,000 <laughs> over a period of six years. So, 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 yeah, so we cut back to the ruined dome. The sun rises over a triumphant humanity. The Harrier jets are flying away in formation like it's a goddamn hair show. <laughs> Which means there was a dope moment where the, the cave people were like, and then, assuming it all goes well, I found yeah. this tape from a Blue Angel Sky show. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we could do this, right? And I was thinking maybe we could do a little, like, you know... <laughs> do the flying V? We could do the flying V. I think we've got that. So Chrissy slow motionly runs at Chani. The world is saved. And then we head back. We're going to wrap the movie up at Fort Knox, where they have locked up Travoltoid because apparently the only lockable thing, or the nearest lockable thing to Denver, Colorado, was Fort Knox... 
They're at the Hudson News with John Travolta. <laughs> Did you guys really pay $29 for a neck pillow? That's fucking insane. <laughs> I'm glad we killed you all and took over your planet. $29 for a neck pillow is ridiculous. That's fucking dumb. So, <laughs> so they're like, we've got you locked up here. Now we have the leverage. Remember leverage was a big part of it? Yeah, leverage. And just then, Forrest Whitacoid walks in. And Johnny's like, ha-ha, or uh, John Travolta's like, ha-ha, my sidekick is here and will now destroy you. And he goes, no, I'm, I'm on their side now. And he's like, really? He's like, I'm not even a Scientologist anymore, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so... He goes, he goes, uh, John Travolta says, and I quote, what kind of crap lousy game are you playing? Sorry, did you say crap lousy? <laughs> crap lousy. <laughs> to taunt me, you said crap lousy? <laughs> it's like being in a fight with a Mormon. <laughs> are, you, are you trying to get this movie on TNT, like, right away? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going anywhere else. Except maybe this podcast. Yeah, right, right. This stupid ass movie thought it was going to get a sequel, right? That was the last note in my fucking thing. Like, this stupid ass movie thought it would go. Well, no, actually, the last thing in my notes was next stop on Amazon was Interstellar. Fuck Amazon for associating those two movies. <laughs> hey, I'm Amazon. I hear you like space movies. <laughs> this one's got Matthew McConaughey. Hey, I got a space movie for you. You guys like Matthew McConaughey? So. From Magic right. Mike. All right, all right, all right. All right, so, but to close things out, I want to stick with this sequel. So I have to point out, originally, th this movie only covers the first half of the book, Battlefield Earth. And from what I was told by a listener... That's why at, it didn't work. Right, That's right, exactly. You work. needed the whole movie. Yeah. But the plan was to make a sequel out of the second half of it. <laughs> Now, from what I was told by a listener who read the fucking book, is that the other half of the book is just about politics and shit of, like, how they rebuild society? It is. It's pretty anti-Semitic, I will... Oh, really? I will You've say... read it? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, they, this is the guy who read fucking Atlas Shrugged. He's I like, did read Atlas Shrugged for spite. I did. And the I, Bible and the Book of Mormon and the Quran. And, I, he's, and still he's like, Battlefield Earth? What are you fucking kidding me? I have not. taste. I've had some David Icke to read. Thank you. Thank you. In, <laughs> in fact, yeah. The sequel's a lot like David Icke, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. So, all right. So now, obviously, given the dismal performance of this movie, the sequel never happened, but John Travolta really wants it to happen. He still wants it to happen. And I want it to happen. So... If and when it does, what do you think the tagline for Battlefield Earth 2 should be? Uh, Battlefield Earth 2, Xenophobia. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. That's good. That's good. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, to be clear about just exactly how anti-Semitic the fucking sequel is supposed to be, I believe the plot is about more aliens attack Earth. So they succeed. They beat the Cyclos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The second part is more, more aliens attack Earth. Are they the Hebrews or something? <laughs> Don't, see, you shouldn't make jokes. <laughs> because it's impossible. You can't satirize fucking Scientology. Yes, the bad, the bad aliens in the next one are like international, intergalactic bankers. Oh, God. <laughs> Globalist bankers. J.K. Rowling is going, that's a little much, y'all. <laughs> Sure is. <laughs> their sure ships is. land and they're adjusting the AC. It's a little warm in here. I'm just <laughs> saying. All right, so tagline, uh, Battlefield Earth fucking two. The protocols of the elders of Zion-tology. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Amazing. All right, well, I'll tell you what, before we wrap things up, I want to have, a, I have to offer up a quick thanks to Morgan Clark for helping out on sound back there. Absolutely. The one and only Claw. I need to thank Tim Robertson, who's out here. He's been helping out. He's somewhere over here. Um, he's been helping out a ton. He helped us find the location. He's been an uh, indispensable part of everything. Uh, I want to thank Ann, BJ, uh, Jackson, Freddie, all the folks at Garden Theater who have made this such a success for us. It's been a great night. 
I need Especially to. Especially the person who loved this movie. Yeah, there's one guy who really likes this movie Freddy. and is very upset. Hi, Freddy. Um, I want to thank Lucinda for, for taking care of the merch table. I want to thank Anna for that and for all the music that she's done. And of course, most of all, I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. Thank you so much for making this such a great night for us. And on that note, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Curl, a.k.a. John Travolta, he had a name, whatever. He went on to sign a one billion year contract <laughs> to be an indentured servant on a sincerely held pirate ship. Yep, yep. Because that's a real thing in Scientology to this day, I believe. Scientology went on to sue us, probably. John Travolta would go on to act out way dumber works of L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and let me close with three words that I've really honestly wanted to say my whole life. Thank you, Detroit! <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights.